Good evening, everybody. A couple of 5-0 and teams butting heads in our Week 6 Game of the Week, the Climax Scots Panthers, led by the law firm of Langs, Langs, and Langs. That would be head coach Tyler Langs, his Hall of Fame offensive coordinator and father, Kevin Langs, and his sister, D-backs coach Janae Langs, taking on Robbie Hatton's Panthers tonight in Colon. The new Channel 3 Football Fever Game of the Week is sponsored by Magala Carpet One. All right, Colin, we go for tonight's homecoming matchup between the Magi and the Children of the Corn. Climax Scott spoiled Athens homecoming last week. Colin outscoring their five opponents by over 200 points this season. We jump in, opening drive of the ball game for the Magi. Simon Vincent to the air, but picked off by Chase Van Middlesworth. That INT leading to a Climax Scott's touchdown. Colin right back to the air, and this time... Simon says touchdown. Owen Wilson, Owen, with the 40-yard touchdown. So Colin up 12 to 6. Second quarter, and the Magi again matriculating. This time it's Tucker Laffler in for the one-yard score. So 18 to 6 home team at the half. Third quarter, Magi again threatening, but Vincent with the rainbow and picked off by Miles Shannon. So a nice return back to, we'll call it about the 25-yard line, and that turnover leading to a Climax Scott's touchdown. Luke Lawrence, two first names, one touchdown. we got a four-point game. Panthers trailing 18-14, to 14, but the Magi are going to put this one away. Justin Wickey, a man among boys, leaping grab, sandwiched by two defenders. Wickey had an uh, eight-player record, 18 grabs earlier this season. Pivotal score there, Colin surviving. Winning this one by a final of 25 to 20. Our man Nate Brown joining us now live from Colon. Nate, your Game of the Week predecessor was a six foot seven inch blonde named Kate Seifert, who everybody absolutely loved. But you've delivered what she could not. Three straight down to the wire Game of the Week finishes. You know, Andy, I cannot take any credit for that. That is due all to the players who are out here on the field putting it on the line every single Friday night. And boy, did we have another classic here out in uh, Colon and uh, the Magi going against the Panthers. And boy, this one going down to the wire, maybe a little bit closer than either team thought, especially the way that Climax Scott started 6-0 and right away. And then, of course, Colon coming back, scoring 18 unanswered. But when all was said and done, it was this passing attack by the Magi that allowed them to come away with a stellar Game of the Week win. Well, we got a couple of threats on the outside. We got a slot, and we just try to find them open, give them the open guy. That's good. Brings out good outcomes. We need that from everyone, though. Owen Wilson, first career touchdown reception tonight as a sophomore, heck of a game. Connor Hetman with some big catches. Um, and then obviously, you know, Justin Wickey still showing how dominant he can be even with the double coverage. So, um, you know, big thing, like I said, is, uh, is Simon Vincent being able to move the ball around, reading the coverages, um, you know, and really getting the ball to the right person. And, of course, the Magi, excuse me, looking rather magical out here on this field tonight as they move to 6-0 and on the year. And, well, hey, we've seen them do this before, I believe, just a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken, marching their way to a state championship, maybe hoping to cast a spell on the rest of their opponents and do the same thing. Andy, going to send it back to you. All right, thank you, Nate. Let's head right back to the field. Porter Central, a homecoming matchup. Pretty much everyone had homecoming tonight against Battle Creek Central. PC holding their homecoming parade before the game. Here's some kids chosen at random named Genevieve, Killian, Declan, and Charlotte, a.k.a. Chuck, <laughs> a.k.a. Charlie. Inside the stadium, students wearing T-shirts supporting the petition to rename the field after legendary former coach Bob Knight, who, of course, passed away last October. All right, we jump in. First quarter opening possession for the Bearcats, and it's Devoy Newton, the keeper on fourth and short, bullying his way in. 7-0, Cats, still first quarter. Oh, Kalen Brown getting loose, and that is what Brown can do for you. The senior with a 67-yard touchdown run, two-point conversion good, so 15-0. Visitors at that point, second quarter, Mustangs getting on the board. Tyler Lynch, little toss sweep, and into the paint there, but Battle Creek Central winning yet again, 29-15, that final. The Three Rivers Wildcats entertaining Vicksburg, both teams, three and two on the, se uh, on the season. The Wildcats coming off an upset loss to Gull Lake. I told you it's homecoming everywhere. 
I was an arcade kid. Little Pac-Man. Second quarter, the Rivers leading 14-0. Caleb Quake's pass tipped, picked off by R.J. Valier, and lucky number seven. A fantastic return, and he gone. That's a pick six, and then suddenly there's a dog. There's the doggy in the camera. Wildcats answering. Caleb Quake can scoot and a little showmanship and nine yard score to make it a 21 to seven ball game. Second half, Quake rolling dangerous pass, nearly picked, but that ball tipped, hold in by Andrew Brown and he is off to the races. The Wildcats winning this one by a final of 35-14. Centerville Bulldogs home tonight against Kasopolis, the Dogs. Winners of three straight casts, just really struggling, still looking for their first W of the season. Very first offensive play of the game for Centerville, Jacob Sicanis reversing field and nice little cutback, splitting the defenders. 46-yard touchdown run, 8-0. Centerville ensuing drive for the Rangers. Cody Redmond gets the handoff, but hit immediately by Chasten Wyckoff and Gavin Bunning. Little gunny bunny, still first half. Micah Lemmings, just an incredible punt return for a score. While you watch and savor, throw a couple numbers at you. Centerville, 490 yards of offense on just 24 offensive plays. On their way to a school record, 80 points as they bagel cast by a final of 80 to nothing. Still to come on the big show, the Lawton Blue Devils looking for a third straight win against Galesburg Augusta and the Plainwell Trojans who came up just short last week against Edwardsburg with an overtime game tonight against Niles. Football fever continues after this. It's nice to unwind after a long week of telling people how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Wade Waldrop's Lawton and Blue Devils aren't rebuilding. They are reloading. Last season's Division 7 state runner-ups off to a 4-1 start. The Blue Devils outscoring their last two opponents 95 to 16. The Rams, meanwhile, suffering their third single digit defeat of the season last week against Schoolcraft. First quarter action, Blue Devils striking first. That's Kel Motter, the first touchdown of the evening. So 7 0 home team. Second quarter, Blue Devils going to add to their lead. This time, Aiden O'Brien, he could be Irish, out in the flat to Motter. 20 yard touchdown reception makes it a 20 to nothing ball game. And Lawton, Going to keep its foot on the gas. Cosby Carter, one yard touchdown. Blue Devils winning this one by a final of 28 to 12. Plainwell Trojans home tonight against Niles. Plainwell coming off a four point loss to perennial conference bully Edwardsburg. Second quarter, Niles quarterback Tellen Bradley, tough to see, but going to cough up the rock and recovered by Michael Griffey. So we're going to head the other way. This is fantastic. Take a look, Landon Devaney, Roland, somehow gonna thread the needle. Look at Griffey, somehow makes the catch there in traffic and then watch as Griffey just dump trucks the defender and forced out of bounds there at about the two yard line. Trojans then cashing in. Devaney gonna keep it himself, but it's Niles who wins this one in overtime, 28-21, that final. All right, what is a high school football game without the fans? And what's a football fever Friday without some chiming pictures from the lovely, the delightful, the effervescent? That's all I got. Erica Moke. I thought you were going to name someone else at that point. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Andy. Well, hey, we got a great crop of photos this week. And speaking of crops, the children of the corn showed no mercy at the Climax Scots colon game. Thankfully, we're talking about these fans and their sign and not the 80s horror movie. Malachi. <laughs> Staying in colon, this fan showing you are never too old to enjoy a Friday night football game in West Michigan. That's great. Yeah, K Central at home against Matawan tonight. A shout out to the band because nothing says homecoming like the sound of the fight song filling Thomas Stadium. At least that's what I'm told they're playing at this point. The guy in the front giving the peace sign. We appreciate that too. Finally, at Portage Central, a touching tribute. Those shirts spell out Bob Knight Field. The students wearing them in a show of support and solidarity of the proposal to name the field after PC's legendary late coach. Now, there is a change.org petition circulating right now to name the field Bob Knight Field. Of course, the legendary coach passed away last October. He coached the Mustangs for 34 years, Andy. 
Yeah, a lot of support for that change, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. Remember, WWMT.com slash chime in to send us your Friday night football photos. Uh, Sego hosting Gall Lake as we head back to the field. Erica already in her car. Weird. The third quarter is where we pick things up. Uh, Blue Devils winning their first game of the season last week against Three Rivers. Gull Lake with the rock here. Quarterback Noah Blake, the keeper, and that is a gain of 10. So let's move the chains. Very next play. Nolan Greenwood. I talked about it this uh, last week, a couple weeks ago. You don't see many running backs with the number 80, but uh, gain of 25. That'll help the average. So Gull Lake in the red zone and later in the drive, Noah Blake this time whistling one in there. Julian Harris takes a pop, holds on, 15-yard score. Break up the Blue Devils. Gull Lake winning this one by a final... Well, it says 41-7. They won. That I know. We might have a score discrepancy. We're not done yet. We've still got four more games for you, including the Portage Northern, St. Joe, and the Madawan K Central matchups coming your way next. The seven-day forecast, sponsored by Sealy Kia of Battle Creek. Hi, I'm Congressman Bill Heisinga. As a third nearly hanging half a hundred in last week's wild game of the week win over Lakeview, the Huskies, a 49-41 win over the Spartans. Northern on the road tonight at St. Joe. The Bears improving to 4-1 after their uh, one-point win last week over PC. And St. Joe getting started quickly. Jaron Brown on the other end of that toss, 50-yard touchdown. So St. Joe tying things at 7, and Northern says... I'll see your 50-yard score and raise you 25. Kane Mack out there in the flat to Xavier Tyus. And if you watch our show regularly, you know the Xavier Tyus can scoot. 75-yard touchdown. But Portage Northern, this time on the wrong end of another wild, high-scoring affair. 62-49 that final. All right, Kalamazoo Central hosting Matawan, the Wildcats, falling by three last week to Battle Creek Central, their second straight single-digit defeat. First play from scrimmage, that's K-Central quarterback C.J. Barry Rowland and Cole Bima. Thank you very much with the INT. So we're scoreless early. And the ensuing drive, Ryan Van Leer. Where's Ryan? There he is. Going to kick it outside and ooh, nice little cut there. 40-yard touchdown run. So Madawan up 7 to nothing. Still fourth, first quarter. Connor Daggett with the dagger. See, uh, see what I did there? I'm unnecessarily proud of that. Uh, Madawan up 14-0 at that point. Wildcats winning this one by a final of 41-7. The Parchment Panthers home against South Haven. Both teams coming up short last week. Did I tell you it's homecoming everywhere? It's like homecoming everywhere. As for tonight's affair, second quarter, that's South Haven running back Justin Frazier. Finding the paint, some hard running there. Rams up 16, nothing. You have to see the baby. Closing minutes of the second quarter, Aaron Jasic, the three sports star, rolling out and hooking up with Will Colville for the score. So the Rams up 16 to seven at that point. Third quarter, Jasic, and again, gonna cut into that deficit, this time rolling right. Benjamin Pelletier, with the touchdown and making a two-point game, but the Rams edging Parchment, winning this one 23-22. Lloyd Norix hosting Dewajak. The Knights looking for their second win of the season against the winless Chieftains. Second quarter action, and we're scoreless. Late in the half, Dewajak finding the paint. Tim Masterman, tough to see, but uh, cracking the plane there, and 7-0 Chieftains at the break. Fourth quarter. Norix answers, another short, uh, short touchdown. Cedric Hen uh, Huntley with the score. Knights, though, would fail on the two-point conversion attempt, and that was huge. Late fourth quarter, Jalen Evans picked off there by Christian Wheaton. That would pretty much do it. Dewajak holding on, edging Norix 7-6. to six. All right, time now to unveil our Week 7 Game of the Week nominees. Comes United looking to knock off the top dogs in the sack. We still have our invisible ink. Schoolcraft hosting Lawton was become a fantastic little rivalry the past few seasons. And Portage Central taking the long trip down Westnage to arch rival 
Portage Northern. The uh, polls are now open. Uh, it's Friday. The graphics, no one wants to work on Friday. Apologies about that, but I promise you'll be able to see it on uh, our website, www.mt.com. All right, wake me up when September ends. Little green day for you. Uh, that's it. That's all. Week six, we are two thirds of the way through the high school season. Simon Vincent and Colin having themselves a day. Heck of a game of the week matchup against the Children of the Corn. Colin surviving in that uh, battle of unbeatens. PC finding the end zone early, but not enough. Battle Creek Central winning yet again tonight. Three Rivers picking up another W. Hope you enjoyed it. You can watch our show just a little bit. We'll have it posted for you on WWMT.com. Mr. Keith Thompson, you can go home, bud. We're not going to need you for final weather. Good night, everybody.